Okay, so the customer wanted to know if the solar system is worth keeping. Um, she has to get a new roof. There is 10 solar panels all together, 10 of them. It's an older system from roughly 2014. She bought the house with solar on it. So she has to replace the roof. The solar panels are gonna have to be removed to replace the roof. And so the question the customer is asking me is, is this solar system worth reinstalling or should she dispose of it and start out with new solar panels? So I'm gonna do an investigation here a little bit, uh, review the physical uh, looks of the solar cells, make sure they're in good condition, look at the inverter, and make a determination whether this system's worth reinstalling or whether she's worth just pitching it and starting over from scratch. Because technology has changed quite a bit from 2014. So, uh, but on the other hand, we don't want to throw it away if it's a good system either. There is limited amount of roof space on this roof as well. So back then we were using like 250, 255 watt panels. Nowadays we're using 330 watt or higher. So about 20% more wattage in today's solar panels. So technology's advanced a bit, just like everything else. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the physical uh, aspects of the solar panels and see if they're good. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is I'm looking to see, is there any broken glass? Is there any uh, burn marks on the solar cells? Um, any what I call snail trails, which is where the solar cells are shorting out. Right here, see that? And that's under the glass. That's not the top of the glass, that's under the glass. Um, this solar cell is shorting out right here. No, no bueno, no good. Um, looks like we got another spot right here. Whoops. Yep, that's under the, under the glass. That's definitely a problem right there again. Yep, so this solar panel is no bueno, no good. Trash can. This solar panel, okay. No broken glass, but again, we got another mark right here. Oh. That's another snail trail. The solar panel shorting out right there. There's another little piece right there. Yeah, this one is also shorting out. Uh, the rest of it just looks like dirt. But that also is no bueno. No good on that one. Another solar panel. Aha. Uh -huh. Another snail trail. See that right there? Yep. Again, solar panel shorting out. It continues right here. That's solar cell shorting out. So that's no bueno. Um, when that happens, um, that could eventually cause the panel to heat up and burn out, especially if it gets very hot and it's shorting out like that at that solar cell. So yeah, that's no bueno. It's another solar panel in the trash can. Um, got another solar cell right up there. That one is also having that same issue. Same issue. I did look, these are 255 watt solar panels. It's a lesser known brand. I'm not sure what the day code is. I'm guessing that these are, again, roughly about eight years old. They should have lasted a lot longer, but again, this is a, a low cost brand. You get what you pay for, but, so that's another solar panel that's no good. This solar panel is actually fine. All right, so that one is good. It's another panel with a snail trail. No bueno. Another snail trail. So alrighty, we got out of 10 solar panels, we already got several solar panels that are no good.
This one here, I'm a little bit concerned about that dark mark right there. It appears that <clears throat> maybe this tab is wearing out and that's going to heat up and eventually short out. That's probably what happened with the rest of the solar cells and those other panels. But I don't see any snail trails on this guy. So it's good, but it's probably eventually, this is eventually going to heat up and like the other panels, it's going to start shorting out right here. We call this a bus bar. This bus bar looks like it's right there too. It's like that's heating up. It might not be a good connection. Right now, that one is actually working. This solar panel right there, uh, that looks like delamination. So there's a laminate that goes on top of the solar cells, a clear plastic that goes on top of the solar cells. It looks like it's coming apart right here at the bus bar. That might be why those snail trails are happening. So this panel also is pretty similar. Here's another solar panel. Again, I don't see any broken glass, so that's a good thing. But uh, again, I, I'm starting to see some burn marks starting to form around the bus bars. I think it's no bueno. But eventually this panel is going to fail like the other ones are, but so far right now it's working. Another solar panel. This one over here seems to be in the same condition. Uh, looks like just some dirt on this guy. Uh, so this one here is fine. Here's another burn mark. You see that? This bus bar. Bus bar is burning apart. Yeah, that's no bueno. This panel is garbage. Okay, so I've completed my analysis here. Out of 10 solar panels, five of them have uh, defects where they got problems in the bus bar or snail trails in the solar cell uh, were shorting out, mainly snail trails in the solar cells. Uh, one bus bar I've seen burn out. Um, but once that happens, these panels are gonna start shorting out. Um, they could eventually get very hot, um, possibly cause a fire. Um, so, I would just recommend replacing them. Again, it's older technology. This uh, 255 watt panel, we're now using at least a 330 watt or better. And it's just a, it's just an off-brand solar panel, um, a Chinese brand that's very low priced. And so you get what you pay for. Um, I don't know how old they are, but I'm guessing they're about eight years old, something like that. They should have lasted longer. Um, you know, it's just not not worth it sometimes to sit there and cut corners. This was done by a do-it-yourself or homeowner. Um, this is a no-no, no bueno. Um, you cannot have solar panels overhanging um, this hip over here. We need to have 18 inches from the hip, that's fire code, in case a fireman ever need to walk the roof. So uh, same thing on that end. That's no bueno. That's not a, that's not with code. Uh, hanging wires all over. Um, that's kind of like a no no. Uh, really don't like that. Um, be nice to have it in conduit. Okay, so I don't like how this is fastened to the roof. See how that's just a bolt going through the roof with some sealant. So they have to hope that that sealant's going to hold 20, 25 years. I'm very skeptical about that. So I would use normally a metal flashing around this and a mechanical water block. That way you're not relying just the sealant to hold up all those years. But this is a very cheap way of doing things. Um, they also did the same thing over here. Okay, so the top picture is what I found on that rooftop. 
is just simply a L bracket that's cemented in place with roof cement, a stainless steel lag bolt driven through the roof, and you're relying on that to last 20 years. It's not gonna last 20 years, and I'll tell you why. Rooftops experience a lot of hot and cold temperatures day after day, year after year. And over 20 years, that's a lot of hot and cold. The roof expands and contracts every time it heats up and cools off. So I would not rely on just roof cement to seal a roof penetration for 20 years. Now let's look at the bottom. The bottom picture, we actually have a metal flashing. The metal flashing, the top part of it is tucked underneath the shingles and we've got a raised hole along with some rubber washers and some roof cement underneath. The bottom picture is the right way to do it. Now what annoys me the most about this is, yeah, the customer, you know, did the shortcut way and, you know, probably saved on 10 panels, it might be $1,000 on a bigger system. This could be four or $5,000 to get these metal flashings that have in the bottom picture because you might need up to four flashings per panel depending on the wind zone and so on. But, you know, the problem is, is this customer, they're going to have a leak or at some point they're going to sell a house to somebody and they're going to say, oh yeah, I had solar panels on the rooftop, but it leaked. It leaked because it was not installed properly. And so this annoys the crap out of me because, hey, if you do anything the wrong way, it's going to have a problem. If you take a shortcut and not do things properly because you want to save some money, it's going to come back and bite you. Okay. So let me show you the quick video on how this flashing works. This one, by the way, is made by a company called Iron Ridge. There's other products out there, but this is one I like and I think it's very effective. Um, by the way, there's different types of flashings for a tile roof, a metal roof, or a flat roof, and I'll cover that in different videos. But let me show you this quick video on how this flashing works on shingle roofs. Introducing FlashView. Forward-looking flashing is the direct result of listening to solar installers about what they need most. It's right for you because it was built for you. The FlashView has been right-sized to an 8-inch width to reduce interference with roofing nails, but remains a code-compliant 12 inches long to provide maximum water shedding. Its three-tier water seal architecture has been reimagined. First, the grip cap plugs the large elevated viewport with its thick rubber seal preventing water intrusion. Then, an EPDM rubber washer secured by the lag seals the deal. FlashView was designed and tested with the same rigor as FlashFoot 2, passing the TAS 100 wind-driven rain test and delivering the structural strength installers depend on. It also offers a low-profile aesthetic, and thanks to the Tyler Grip Cap Plus, arrays can hug the roof even when there are undulations. Attach rails by dropping the hardware into the open slot, and you're done. The Iron Ridge Flash View. So the newer solar panels, by the way, are smaller and more efficient. So we might be able to fit um, four solar panels in that same spot that are a modern uh, model. You know, uh, the newer solar panels, especially on the front of the house, I would put up black panels. Uh, this is the old style with a silver frame. That's okay. If, you got a back roof, but on the front of the house, I highly prefer to have a black solar panel. It just looks nice and neat. Okay, so let's do a quick comparison. Notice the pink house on the top has those silver frame solar panels with the white back sheet versus the house on the bottom that has modern all black solar panels. The all black solar panels look very aesthetically appealing. They just look like black squares of glass. It gives the house a very modern look and a very neat looking look for a very attractive curb appeal. So anytime you have a front roof, I'd recommend getting all black solar panels. It's another reason why I would recommend for the pink house on top to get brand new solar panels. It's getting a new roof, so that's why they call me up and they ask whether the system is worth reinstalling. Um, Sometimes it is worth reinstalling, and that's fine. Um, if it's, the panels are good, it's a modern solar system um, with a high-efficiency solar panel, 
um, and you got a good quantity of them, it's, it's worth reinstalling. But in a case like this, you know, there's only 10 solar panels. Um, they're having five of them out of 10 are having problems. Um, I don't recommend reinstalling them. I'd recommend donating the five good ones to Habitat for Humanity or something like that. Or if there's a recycling center, we'll see if we can find a recycling center. But they're not worth reinstalling because it would cost a couple thousand dollars at least to reinstall just 10 panels. So uh, it, it's just money thrown down the drain. Again, happy to do it if it's a good system. Uh, this was a do-it-yourself for homeowner system as well. Probably they got quotes from somebody, uh, some companies, and said, hey, I can do that cheaper. And somebody sold them a kit, some solar panels, but you get what you pay for. So I recommend um, using a proper installation techniques so you avoid any roof leaks. Um, using a high-quality solar panel. Don't cut, don't cut corners on a solar panel inverter. You're going to get what you pay for. And if you get a solar panel that is not a name brand, not a very well-known company, um, it's probably going to end up having a shorter life. You get what you pay for. Um, the solar companies, by the way, their profit margins are very, very thin. They're in single digits. So if somebody's got a lower price solar panel, there's some kind of compromise somewhere. It's either the longevity of the solar cells, um, the frame might not be as sturdy, the glass might be thinner, um, things like that. It, it might be less efficiency, so it's a bigger solar panel, takes up more space on the rooftop, which means you get less electricity, um, these sort of things. So there is really no cutting corners. There's no free lunch, so to speak. And you know, I know some homeowners like to try things themselves, and I do some home projects myself also uh, by myself, but there's certain other home projects that I do not recommend doing yourself. And solar is one of those things I'd recommend have professionally installed by a local installer just because uh, there is so much involved in making sure it's done the right way, make sure it's done with quality equipment, that your roof is properly sealed. Um, this high voltage, you wanna make sure that the electrical codes are followed. It's inspected by an inspector. Uh, hopefully this was inspected, I don't know if it was, but hopefully it was inspected by an inspector. But, you know, high voltage electricity is something not to mess with and could cause a fire, heaven forbid, if you hook it up wrong or it shorts out somewhere. So I'll go down and also check the inverter as well. It is a selector inverter. Uh, appears to be working. This place is kind of hard to read. But it does appear to be on and working. So this is a, again, older string inverter. It does not have uh, solar panel optimization in case some solar panels are shaded and some are not. Uh, these days I recommend either doing a microinverter like Enphase or a solar edge with optimizer system type system. They're more efficient and you also can tell if a certain solar panel is bad, you know exactly which solar panel is bad. So um, again, this is just a technology back then. Uh, we've come away since then. I'm gonna recommend the customer to start over with a brand new inverter, brand new modern solar panels, and get a brand new system that's gonna be properly installed and properly warrantied. Okay, Solar Bright Green Greg here. What we do on this channel is we give customers helpful information about solar pool heating, solar panels for home, solar electric, and energy efficiency. And I do it all without any sales pitch. I'm just trying to help homeowners do some basic troubleshooting and also learn about solar. Hey, I'm a homeowner too, and I know how it is. You're trying to do a home improvement or troubleshoot something, and you don't want a sales pitch. You just want helpful advice. If that's you, you're in the right spot. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much, and have a great sunny day. Bye-bye. See you next video.